Welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss enhanced input for a two-dimensional input action. In the last video, we used our input action move, which has a value type axis 1D, or a float, in order to move a pawn by linking a callback function to that input action in C++. In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit more complex of a pawn. This pawn has a camera boom with a view camera attached to it. And our goal here is to use enhanced input to move our mouse to rotate that camera around. In fact, we want to rotate our bird itself. So I have a project here set up to use our input action called IA move to move the bird forward and backward. We saw in the last video how we could do that. Now, I've also added the functionality to rotate our camera around. In fact, we're rotating the bird itself with mouse input, and this is done in the old way, and we're going to convert that into the new way using enhanced input. Now, the old way involves going to project settings and adding some mappings. Now, I've added a turn axis mapping and a look up axis mapping, and in the old way, what we would do is we would create function callbacks for both of those axis mappings. I call them turn and look up, and these take float values, and we would have to bind those to the axis mapping and set a player input component using bind axis on the player input component. Now, in the last couple videos, we created a callback to bind to our input action in the new way, so this project is using a sort of combination of the new and old ways and our turn and lookup functions, if we look at those, simply call add controller yaw input and add controller pitch input to rotate our controller. And the reason we can rotate our controller and have our pawn rotate along with the controller is because of the settings in the pawn itself. If we type use controller, looks like I have all caps on, we have use controller rotation pitch and rotation yaw checked which means as the controller rotates, our pawn itself, the root component, will rotate along with that controller. So we're going to convert this to the new system rather than using the old way of binding to axis mappings. And that means we need an input action for looking. Now the cool thing is we can use a single input action to handle both turning and looking up, we can move our mouse around and use a single input action to handle both the X and Y axis movement of our mouse. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is an input action. So I have an input folder where I have my move input action and my input mapping context. Watch the previous videos to learn all about those. But we're going to make a new input action. So we're going to right click, go to input, and select input action, and I'm going to call this IA underscore look. So we'll have a separate action to handle looking around or rotating our controller, and thus rotating our pawn and the camera along with it. So we can open IA look. Now, by this point, we know that an input action can store input data in the form of a Boolean, true or false, based on whether or not this input action has been triggered by input. We've also seen that we can use axis 1D, that's a single float value, and we're using that in our IA move input action. We'll have a positive value when we press the W key and a negative value when we press the S key. And the reason that is, is because we set that up in our input mapping context. Our input mapping context has IA move, and we've added W and S to it with a negate modifier on the S key, so that when we press the S key, the input value, that float that IA move stores, will be a negative one as opposed to a positive one when we press W. But now in IA look, we're not going to use axis 1D float, we're going to use axis 2D, in parentheses, vector 2D. This is a vector that stores two values, X and Y. So we can change it to axis 2D. And if we want to use this input action, we have to add it to our input mapping context, just like we added IA move. So I'm going to collapse IA move and click on plus next to mappings to add a new input action. 
And from the dropdown, I'm going to look for my new input action called IA look. And I can start adding some types of input to this input action. Now, my goal here is to move the mouse and get input from that mouse movement. Now, I can expand the dropdown and expand mouse. And yes, we can link up the mouse x axis. That's only input data when we're moving the mouse left and right. If we're moving it up and down, mouse X won't have that information. We can also do mouse Y separately, but here we have an option for mouse XY, 2D axis. If we select that, then that means as we move the mouse up, down, left, or right, then we'll have a two-dimensional vector, X and Y, that contains the movement information corresponding to that mouse movement input. So we'll leave it at that. We won't add any modifiers just yet, but we'll see very soon how we can add modifiers to a two-dimensional form of input like this. But now our input mapping context has IA look, a new input action. And we want to be able to bind a C++ function to this input action. So it'll be called when this input action is triggered. In other words, when we're moving our mouse. So this brings us back to our C++ project. And in order to bind a callback function, we need a couple things. First of all, we need a variable for that new input action. So just like we made a variable for the move action, we're going to make a variable for the look action. We'll call this variable look action. And our plan is to set this look action variable in Blueprint. And we'll set it to our new IA look input action that we just created in the editor. So we'll remember to set that before we test everything. And now that we have look action, we also want a function to bind to look action. And in the new system, in order to get that two dimensional input value information, we need a function that takes an F input action value. So we'll go ahead and create a new function simply called look. And it's gonna take a const reference to an F input action value. So we'll go ahead and make a function definition for look. And now we need to access the value in the input action. So when the input action gets triggered, look will be fired off and it will receive the input action value data. We want to get that. Now we've seen that we can call value.get, we can specify boolean, we can specify float, but in this case our input action that we plan on being triggered and calling our look function is going to be the type of input action that stores a 2D vector of values, a two-dimensional value. And to do that, we take our value and we call get and specify f vector 2D. That's the type of data that this type of input action can store. Why? Because if we look at our IA look input action, we selected the value type axis 2D in parentheses vector 2D. So this is an F vector 2D at the C++ level. We're going to store this in a local variable of type F vector 2D, and we'll call this look axis value. So we'll set that equal to the value that we get using the get function on F input action value. Now we need to bind the look function to our input action, and we do that in setup player input component. We've already seen how to do it We've done it with our move function. We can do this again with our look function. So we can copy this line, but we do need to change the input action that we pass in. We now have a new variable called look action. That's the input action we'll pass in instead of move action. And the function callback is going to be our new look function. So we're going to change that to the look function. Now we don't need these turn and lookup functions bound to those axis mappings. We're not using axis mappings anymore. That's the old way. We're going to go ahead and remove those lines. And now we've bound our new function to the look action. So in the old way, we used two functions, turn and look up. Now we have a single function. And we can use a single function because we have both x and y stored in a vector 2D. Vector 2Ds have x and y variables. So here's what we're going to do. We're first going to check if get controller. I want to make sure we have a valid controller before we go about calling these functions, add controller, pitch, input, 
and add controller yaw input. So we'll call add controller yaw input first. So what do we pass in here? Because we know that as we move our mouse left and right, our input action is receiving input. Well, the behavior for the input action, whose value type is axis 2D, which we've linked up to mouse XY 2D axis, is that as we move the mouse left and right, that left and right movement info will fill in the X component of that two-dimensional vector that IA look stores. And as we move the mouse up and down, that movement information will go into the Y component of that F vector 2D. So if we want to rotate our character's yaw, we want to use the X component of this F vector 2D look axis value. So we'll get look axis value and we can use dot X. And we also want to be able to look up and down, that's changing the pitch of our controller. So we'll use add controller pitch input. And for this, we want that Y value in the F vector 2D. So we'll take look axis value dot Y and pass Y into add controller pitch input. Now we don't even need turn and look up. We're not using them anymore. We can simply delete those functions and we can delete the function declarations for them. We don't need those. So now we have a single function that can add pitch and yaw input to our controller, thus rotating it. So from the editor, I'm gonna go ahead and save everything and close out and we'll compile from Visual Studio. And with a successful compile, we'll go ahead and open up Unreal Engine again. We'll open up all the asset editors we had open. And again, this is minimal default, so I'm gonna need to drag in a bird pawn. I'll bring it up. And before I press play, I have to remember that we added a new variable, a new input action variable. So in the bird pawn, if I search for input, there's the new look action. That's the C++ variable. We made it edit anywhere. We have to set that to our new IA look input action. So we'll set that there and we can press play. And if I click in the viewport, I can move my mouse and we're rotating. Now I'd like to bring your attention to the fact that when I move my mouse upward, I'm looking down. And when I move my mouse downward, I'm looking up. This is the inverted configuration that's used in some games. It's usually set as a setting that you can change as the player. And if you don't like inverted, I personally don't. We can make use of a modifier to modify the data for IA look. We do this in our input mapping context by adding a modifier here. So we're going to add a modifier and from the drop down I can choose negate. Now we have to be careful because remember negate will negate X, Y, and Z. We can expand the index to see X, Y, and Z are all checked. Now we don't want to negate X. That would mean our X value information in the vector 2D would be negated. So if we moved our mouse to the left, we would look right. And if we moved our mouse to the right, we would look left. That's not what we want. We can uncheck that. But we do want to negate Y so that when we move the mouse up, we'll actually be looking up. Now Z doesn't matter because this input action only stores X, Y information. So negating Z doesn't affect anything. We could leave it checked or uncheck it. It doesn't matter. But now that we have a negate modifier, we can go back, press play, click. And if I move my mouse up, I look up and I move it down, I look down. And now I have the ability to fly around in the level and I have a bit more control. So now we're using enhanced input to move our mouse to rotate the character. And that involves using an input action that can take two dimensional input in the form of X and Y axes. And we saw that by adding IA look to our input mapping context and linking it up with our mouse X, Y 2D axis, our X and Y mouse movement left and right up and down fills in that input action vector 2D. And by binding a function which we called look to our look action, we could then use C++ code to do what we want with that input data. And we don't have to alter the input data here in the code because our modifiers took care of that for us. We had the negate modifier only negating the Y in order to reverse the direction that we rotate 
when we move our mouse up and down. So now we know how to use an input action that takes an axis 2D. So excellent job. We now have the ability to take input in the form of input actions, and we're able to control our pawn because we linked up that input mapping context with our local player. Remember in previous videos, we did that in begin play by first getting the player controller, then the enhanced input local player subsystem, and from the subsystem, we added the mapping context that contains those input actions, IA move and IA look. And the cool thing about this is you can call this function and add input mapping contexts in the middle of the game. You could remove this in the middle of the game and then input would stop working. Or you can add a new input mapping context. And we saw that by using different priority values, we can make sure that we don't get collisions between input mapping contexts. And of course, before we wrap up, I'm just going to remind you that you can hit the tilde key while playing in a Pi session and type show debug enhanced input. And now check this out. Not only do we have our W and S, and we can see when those are triggered, but when we move the mouse, we see that we're triggering our IA look, and we can see the X and Y values of this input action. So excellent job setting up enhanced input. We'll continue with more complex enhanced input in the videos to come. I'll see you soon.